Hi everyone! Today I'm going to be showing you how I'm going to finish a printmaking piece of art that I had started at school before we had to close and right now I'm going to work on doing the last layer of color. But first let's start by taking a look at what I'm using for my tools. Now these tools are the same ones that I use with my students at school. This is the metal plate that I'll be putting my ink out on. The last color of ink I'm going to be doing today is black ink. This is the roller that we use to spread the ink out on the printing plate and then to put it on the block. And then this is the Baron that we use to put pressure on the print to help it transfer onto the paper. Over here is my printing block. Uh, at school we've been using a material called soft cut. I like it a lot. It carves really well. You can draw on it easily and unlike linoleum which sometimes you have to heat up to make it a little softer to carve you don't need to do that with this. It, it cuts and carves very very easily and the kids really enjoy using it. So far I have done two layers of color. Now this specific type of print is called a reduction print because you are constantly reducing the surface of available printing space on your block as you print each color layer. So the first thing I carved was everything that I wanted to stay white in my print. The white isn't ink, it's just the white of the paper. So I carved all of that away and then the first color that I printed was pink right here. You always wanna start with your lighter color and then slowly work to the darker colors. So I printed pink for the whole thing for my first layer. Then I went back to my block after I was done printing, washed the ink, dried it, did all of that good stuff. And I carved away everything that I wanted to stay pink because I didn't want this part to pick up any ink when I put the next color of ink on it or else it would just get covered up. So I carved away everything that is pink in this print right here. And then I re-inked the block with teal and I printed on the same papers that I had already printed. Now, you might ask, how do you keep them lined up? There's a few different ways you can do it, but the easiest way that I do it, because it's something that's always accessible, is I use cardboard. My printing paper is nine by 12 and this cardboard is nine by 12 as well. And what I did is I traced my block onto it and cut almost like a picture frame here. So it fits right on top of the block. And then I know that my paper, if I line it up carefully at the top, it will line up each time. So this is my registration frame, just making sure that all of my prints line up well each time. And it usually works pretty well. Some You always make more prints than you think you need because not all of them are going to come out well. So right now I have six good prints that are ready to go for the final layer of color. I'm going to show you what a print that did not come out well looks like. So here is a print that did not register properly. This is one that lined up well. This one, I probably wasn't paying close enough attention and I did not properly line my print up. You can see this whole pink gap down the front of the face, the shadow at the cheek and the ear doesn't match up properly and the eye is offset as well. But this is not a properly aligned print. So I'm not gonna use this for any more printing because I know it's already no good. So I might as well not take the time to print those papers. But I have these good ones here that are lined up well enough that I'm going to print. I'm not worried about this little bit of color right here because that is eventually going to get covered by black ink. But a little bit of texture isn't necessarily a bad thing. This print had a little more texture than I would like, but because it otherwise lined up well, I'm gonna try it anyways with the black ink and see how it goes. But most of them, came out really, really clean. I like a little bit of texture like that. I think it looks pretty cool in the finished print. So we're gonna give this a go and see how well it comes out. All right, time to print. So I always like to keep my workspace organized when I'm working on printing a block 
because there's just less chance of accidentally getting ink where you don't want it and it helps you avoid getting fingerprint smudges on your prints. I do have a roll of paper towels over here just in case I need them later, but I'm gonna go ahead and put some ink on my printing plate and I'm gonna start rolling it out to get it to the uh, consistency that I need to put on my printing block. For the most part, you don't really wanna move your printing block around. You always wanna bring your registration frame and your prints to the block. You're never picking the block up and flipping it or doing anything like that. It stays put. So I'm gonna squeeze about that much ink out on here. There goes the lid. All right. So this is a water soluble ink. So you don't wanna to take too long to do this because the ink wants to dry. I'm gonna go ahead and start rolling this out on here. Hear that sticky sound the ink makes? Almost like Velcro. You want that sound. That means you're getting the ink rolled out to a good consistency. If your roller is sliding around on your printing plate, it means you probably have too much ink on your roller and you can scrape some off with a palette knife or something like that. Now, I've got my roller all ready to go and I'm gonna start putting it on the block. This is the fun part. This is where you get to really see your image really well. I'll go back and get more ink as I need it. I'm not worried about getting some ink on the table here because I'll wipe that up with the paper towel before I start to print. And then because this is a water soluble ink, I can just clean that off later. All right, I'm gonna put that there. A little bit of paper towel for the table so I don't get my registration frame too messy. There we go. And I'm gonna put my frame on my block, just like that. And I'm gonna take one of my prints. Let's start with this one. And I'm going to very carefully line it up at the top of my registration frame and kind of roll it down onto the printing block. I'm gonna give it a little pat to help stick it in place. And then I'm going to take my Baron. This lets me put even pressure on the paper to help get a clean transfer of my design. This print is a portrait of the musician David Bowie. My 11th graders were working on an assignment where they had to do a portrait using block printing. And it could be of whoever they wanted, a celebrity, a historical figure, a friend, a family member, whatever they wanted. But it just had to be a portrait of a real person. They did printmaking with me last year as well, which is why they get to do something a little more advanced for their printmaking assignment in 11th grade. All right, this looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and peel this up and see what we've got. Pretty good, I'm pretty happy with that. I like the little bits of texture. I think it looks cool in the background. The facial features lined up really well. The hair came out really nice and the eyes, nose and mouth are well lined up, especially at that edge along the profile of his face. Pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and print the rest of these and then I'll show you how we're going to finish the whole series. All right, so I'm done printing. I've printed all six images and now we're going to do some quality control. This is where you want to be really picky when you're picking out what are going to be the final prints in your series. You want the ones that one, printed the cleanest and two, look the most similar. So I have a few that didn't line up as well as I would have liked. This one I'm gonna take out. Same with this one. The edge of the nose didn't show up as well as I would have liked. It's not awful, but it wouldn't qualify as one of the final prints in this series. Um, let's see. 
This one, if I'm being honest, the nose is a little too off on that one. Everything else showed up really well, but I have some that came out better. So I'm going to pull this one out of the series as well. Just because I'm pulling a print out of the series doesn't mean I'm not gonna do anything with it. I still might have some fun with it in another way. Sometimes I'll scan it and add more to it digitally. I could go back and, I don't know, draw or paint on top of it. Like this one lined up really well, but it has a bit more texture than I would like. And I goofed, I let the paper touch the block a little too soon as I was lining everything up and it picked up some ink where it should not have it, which is too bad because it lined up really well, but that happens, that's okay. I'm gonna save this one still and do something else with it. I'm just not going to count it as part of my series. Let's set that aside. However, these two came out really good. I'm really happy with how these turned out. I feel like they have just enough of that gritty printing texture in the background. And everything in the face lined up really well. I have no smudges. My edges are clean. These are going to be the final two prints in my series. And I'm going to show you how you number a print and finish it off to make it complete. All right, so now I'm going to sign and label my prints. This is typically done with a pencil, and this is a limited series of prints. You can do prints in two different ways. You can have a limited series where you only print a specific number and that's all there will ever be, which tends to happen with reduction prints because you're constantly reducing the block. So I couldn't go back and print those pink and turquoise layers if I wanted to, because I've already carved those parts of the block away. So this is it. Um, but you can have an unlimited series of prints if you're doing like a one color print, or if you do two different blocks that are inked in different colors and then combined to make one print. But this is going to be a limited series. So what I do is because I have two, down in this corner, like a fraction, I'm going to write one slash two, and then on the second one over here, I'm going to do two slash two. Then next to the number, you put your title. This is just going to be Bowie, because it's a portrait of the musician David Bowie. And then over here, you sign your name. There we go. And that's it. And my prints are done. I'm gonna let those finish drying. And I hope you enjoyed. See you later, everyone.